Unit 2, changes in matter. Our first type of change is a physical change. In a physical change, the original substance still exists. It's only changed forms. It changes in shape or state. The water in the beakers will form steam. The steam is still water, just in gaseous form. When we hammer two pieces of wood together to build a playhouse, the wood can change shape. It's still wood. If we tear a sheet of paper in half, we have two pieces of paper, still paper. Phase changes are physical changes. These are physical changes that occur when a change in state of matter happens. So we're going to add heat or remove heat to change the temperature to reach either a melting or a boiling point. And what's going to be important for us to see is that the temperature is, does not change during a phase change. So if we take a solid and we want to make it a liquid, we'd add heat to it. If we talk about water, we'd have something below zero degrees Celsius. We'd add heat until the temperature reached zero degrees Celsius. This would be the melting point of water. So as the, wa as the ice melts into liquid water, that temperature would stay at zero degrees Celsius until it fully became a liquid, and we would then see the raise, the raise in the rise, sorry, the rise in temperature until it became, until it started to reach its boiling point. Now, if we wanted to go the back way and take liquid water, we could remove heat and decrease that temperature until we still, until we reach that melting point again. In this case, we might call it a freezing point, but melting point, freezing point, it's two things that describe the same temperature, zero degrees Celsius. Now, if we added heat to liquid water, we would eventually reach a boiling point. Now, boiling is just one type of vaporization. Vaporization is moving from a liquid to a gaseous state. There are two types of vaporization. There's boiling, which occurs at the boiling point, which would be 100 degrees Celsius. There's also evaporation. Evaporation is the vaporization of liquid, but it occurs below the boiling point. Think about when, if you've ever air dried some wet clothes. The water that was contained in the clothes didn't reach 100 degrees Celsius, yet it still evaporated away. If you've ever washed dishes by hand and let them dry overnight, that water is gone the next morning because it evaporated. We don't have that water reaching 100 degrees Celsius. It's not boiling. So there are two types of vaporization. Condensation occurs when a gas condenses down into a liquid, when we go from a gaseous form to a liquid form. This most, this mostly occurs, or one of the most easy way to see when it occurs, would be the morning dew that you see when you get up in the morning. It doesn't rain over, it didn't rain overnight, but when you get up, the grass or your car is still wet, still has water on it. That's because water vapor in the air condensed down into a liquid. Our fifth and sixth types of phase changes occur when substances move from the gaseous phase to the solid phase, or from the solid phase to the gaseous phase. These are sublimation and deposition. Now, if you notice, the arrows that are around red, sublimation, vaporization, and melting, they're in red because it requires heat to be brought into the system. Bringing heat into the system would be what we call an endothermic phase change. Deposition, condensation, and freezing all require heat to be removed. So these are going to be exothermic. We can separate mixtures due to differences in their physical properties. One way is through filtration. Filtration uses a barrier to separate a solid from a liquid, and this separation occurs because, a diff because of the difference in their sizes. So some molecules are able to pass through the barriers while, other while others are not. If you've ever made macaroni and cheese or spaghetti, you've boiled water, added the pasta, and then strained it. This straining is filtration. You filtered the pasta from the water. 
Other separation techniques include distillation. This is where we heat some sort of mixture together, and we separate the mixture, the substances in the mixture, by differences in their boiling points. So the most often, or one of the more common examples we talk about, we can separate salt water by distillation. We boil salt water, and water having a much lower boiling point than salt will then move up the will then move up the column, and then can condense back down into the water. This product that's formed is clean drinking water, while what's left over, what's left over in our initial, in our initial uh, tube, is is the salt. We can also use crystallization. Crystallization is the formation of a pure solid particles from a solution containing the previously dissolved substances. If you've ever made or seen rock candy being made, you essentially take a very rich sugar water mixture and start by dunking in a string. That sugar starts to connect, starts to connect together and starts to bind with with the string and eventually you have that nice rock candy that some of us may have had. Our chemical reactions are what we're going to use to look at chemical changes. Okay? Chemical changes are a result of testing chemical properties. Okay? These can only be observed when substances in a sample of matter are changing into new substances. The two most common chemical properties would be flammability and reactivity. So chemical changes are a result of a chemical reaction. One or more new substance, one or more substances changes into one or more new substances. During a chemical change, the composition of matter always changes. We always have a reactant and a product. We always have sodium and chlorine to start, and that makes table salt. So sodium and chlorine would be our reactants and table salt would be our product. We could take water as the reactant and break it down into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, our products. There's some clues that we can use to determine if a ch chemical change has occurred. They include things like color change. I'm sure you've noticed that sometimes pennies go from that nice copper looking color and sometimes they turn into that old crusty green color. Okay, it's because it's undergone a chemical change. That copper has reacted with water and oxygen in the air, and it's oxidized. Another way to see a chemical change is the production of a gas. So on the left side, we have the balloons with some powdery solid in it. When we pick up the balloons to dump the solid into the liquid, those balloons expand because we have that formation of a gas. And finally, there's a the formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is a solid that's formed by mixing together two liquids. So we mix together the yellow liquid with the clear liquid, and we see that white we see this white powder forming on the bottom of the test tube, and that yellowish liquid on top. That yellow powder is the precipitate. There are actually five clues to help us determine if a chemical reaction has taken place. There's the three we've already discussed: color change and formation of a gas which would include things like bubbling or fizzing and popping, and precipitate formation. We can also use energy change. Okay, these changes can either be exothermic or endothermic, just like our phase changes. If we mix together two substances and it releases heat, it would feel hot. This would be an exothermic reaction. They would be releasing heat. If we mix two substances together and all of a sudden it felt cold, well then heat would be drawn into it and this would be an endothermic reaction. And finally, the production of light. If you mix things together and all of a sudden a light forms or starts to glow, we can be pretty sure that it's a chemical reaction or chemical change is going on. So let's classify things as being physical or chemical changes. When placed in water, sodium pellet catches on fire as hydrogen gas is liberated and sodium hydroxide forms. 
Well, the fact that there was fire means that light was produced, so that's a clue that chemical changes occurred. Hydrogen gas is liberated, so the formation of a gas is another clue. And the fact that hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide forms, those are both different than the water and the sodium that we originally had. So this would be a chemical change. Hydrochloric acid reacts with potassium hydroxide to produce salt, water, and heat. Would this be physical or chemical? This would be a chemical change. Well, we see that heat is being, is being released, so this would be an exothermic reaction. So we have that change in energy. We started with hydrochloric acid and potassium hydroxide. We finished with salt and water. So two reactants form two new products. This is a chemical change. Fireworks exploding. Well, fireworks would give us, it would be an exothermic reaction because the explosion would release heat. It would produce light. So we would say that fireworks exploding would be a chemical change. Evaporation. Evaporation is the phase change from a liquid to a so from a liquid to a gas that occurs below the boiling point. Since it's a phase change, phase changes are physical. When water evaporates, it's still water, just in its gaseous form. Melting butter for popcorn. Well, we have solid butter. If we melt it, then we just have liquid butter. Okay, again, we're looking at a phase change. We're looking at melting. Phase changes are physical changes. Hammering wood together to build a playhouse. We had wood before, and we have wood after. Let's just change the shape or merge together to build that playhouse. It's still wood, so hammering wood together would be a physical change. Finally, iron rusting. With rusting, we have that nice grayish color that iron usually is, and when it rusts, it turns into that ugly reddish orange. Color change is a clue that a chemical reaction has occurred. Iron rusting is a chemical change.